Misco Electric here. Today is Sunday, December 7th, 2025, and this is The Current, your weekly EV news in about 10 minutes. Yaza, the British motor supplier acquired by Mercedes-Benz, has unveiled a prototype axial flux in-wheel powertrain that has the potential to transform EV design. Several manufacturers are currently producing axial flux motors, which excel in power and torque density, up to double the power and quadruple the torque of radial equivalents seen in most EVs, while slashing the weight by 50% and axial length by 80%. This translates to superior performance through instant torque delivery and sustained high outputs without thermal throttling, and enhances efficiency through reduced material use, including less copper, iron, and magnets, and optimized regenerative braking. Smaller motors enable more flexible vehicle design and packaging, freeing cabin space and improving aerodynamics, and enabling compact, lightweight architectures that can increase range and improve handling. The Mercedes-Benz AMG GTXX is an example we have reported about that will be produced with Yaza's axial flux motors. I'll link that episode below if you want to learn more about that vehicle. The fully integrated in-wheel prototype centers on Yaza's axial flux motor, which weighs just 28 pounds, yet delivers 750 kilowatts or over 1,000 brake horsepower peak per wheel. The system is hailed as the world's first mass-neutral in-wheel motor, adding no net weight to the vehicle while enabling over 1,100 pounds in overall powertrain savings by eliminating drive shafts, disc brakes, and bulky central drivetrains. The hardware packaging also includes a proprietary 33-pound dual inverter with 100 kilowatt per kilogram density. This news comes as Yaza hits a milestone of producing their 50,000th axial flux motor at their Oxford UK facility, which opened in May of 2024. Their capacity now exceeds 25,000 units annually. At these volumes, we don't expect Yaza Motors to propel mainstream EVs anytime soon. Their hardware powers Ferrari and Lamborghini hybrid models today and will underpin upcoming Mercedes-AMG EVs. Electric Vertical Takeoff and Landing, or eVTOL manufacturer Archer Aviation, announced plans this week for a comprehensive air taxi network spanning the Miami metropolitan area. The initiative, dubbed as Skyport Ecosystem, promises to significantly reduce commute times with zero emission flights of 10 to 20 minutes between key hubs, with the ability to transform how residents and tourists navigate the region. The network will link major population centers, including Miami. Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Boca Raton, and West Palm Beach, while providing connections to the area's three primary international airports, Miami International, Fort Lauderdale Hollywood International, and Palm Beach International. Additional routes will incorporate five general aviation airports, such as Miami Executive and Boca Raton, leveraging fixed-based operator facilities from partners like Atlantic Aviation and Signature Aviation. Central to the rollout are infrastructure partnerships aimed at building and upgrading vertiports, aka dedicated eVTOL landing pads. Real estate giant Related Ross will develop a new vertiport in downtown West Palm Beach as part of its premium mobility hub project. Dragging Global's Magic City Innovation District in Miami's Little Haiti neighborhood plans a purpose-built site as well. Meanwhile, Hard Rock Stadium and the Apogee Golf Club northwest of Palm Beach will repurpose existing helipads for Archer's fleet. Archer's piloted four-passenger flagship Midnight eVTOL aircraft will carry the passengers. Just weeks ago, Ago, we shared the news of Archer establishing a network in Los Angeles too by leasing Hawthorne Municipal Airport and building out a testbed for their future technology. The company remains on track for commercial operations in the United Arab Emirates in 2026. With FAA certification on track, do you think electric commercial flight will become commonplace by 2030? Each week, some of our viewers ask about Canadian EV progress in the comments section. Well, we have news for you. This week, the Canadian government announced over $10 million in new federal funding to support EV adoption by focusing on expanding public charging infrastructure and pioneering cost-saving advancements in EV motor technology. More than $9 million from the Zero Emissions Vehicle Infrastructure Program will support two key projects to deploy over 1,200 new chargers nationwide. 
Green Economy Canada will receive $7 million to install 950 Level 2 chargers and 40 DC fast chargers in Alberta, New Brunswick, and Ontario, targeting workplace, multifamily buildings, and public spaces. New Brunswick Power Corporation will be allocated $2.1 million in addition to their near $1 million of existing funding from the program for 240 additional chargers at on-street locations, public sites, and light-duty fleet hubs in New Brunswick. On top of the infrastructure investment will be $1.4 million from the Energy Innovation Program that will fund University of New Brunswick's New Magnetic Materials for Electric Vehicle Motors project. The initiative develops high silicon electrical steels and rare earth free permanent magnets to reduce EV motor costs and enhance efficiency, aiming to address supply chain vulnerabilities tied to imported rare earth elements. The projects align with Canada's goal of 84,000. 500 public chargers by 2029 and supports the nation's net zero emissions target by 2050. Installations are slated to begin early next year with full rollout expected by 2027. Here in the U.S. this week, not-for-profit public power provider Ava Community Energy launched its flagship fast charging station in Northern California. The new facility, located in the Oakland City Center West Garage, features 18 high-powered ChemPower DC fast chargers with 31 connectors, which makes it the largest non-Tesla charging hub in the region. The dispensers are compatible with all EV models, offering both CCS and NACS compatibility. The equipment is rated to deliver peak speeds of up to 320 kilowatts for the CCS connectors and 360 kilowatts for the four NAX connectors, but they also have one Chatamo compatible dispenser that outputs up to 100 kilowatts. Nearly half of Alameda County residents are renters without home charging capabilities. Ava says the hub prioritizes underserved communities as part of Oakland's 2030 Equitable Climate Action Plan. The station is the first in a planned network of up to 15 hubs by 2030, spanning Alameda County and cities like Tracy, Stockton, and Lathrop. Ava serves more than 2 million customers as one of California's 25 community choice aggregators. Dynamic pricing ranges from 53 cents to 69 cents per kilowatt hour, depending on the time of day. One hour of complimentary parking is available for those who are charging. Beyond that, the daily rate is $12. I would consider those rates to be high compared to the rest of the country, but electricity is expensive in the San Francisco Bay Area, as are the rents. Do you think hubs like these will bolster EV adoption by urban renters? The United States Postal Service provided an update on its $9.6 billion electric fleet initiative, revealing that more than 2,600 all-electric vehicles are now actively delivering mail across the country, even as production delays persist. In a letter to Congress and reviewed by Reuters, USPS detailed its progress on replacing its aging fleet of over 220,000 vehicles, many of which were manufactured in the 1980s. The new fleet promises reduced emissions and lower maintenance costs. On average, each vehicle in the outgoing fleet costs $8,000 annually to maintain. The initiative is funded by $3 billion of funding approved by Congress as part of the Inflation Reduction Act. The program plans to distribute 106,000 new vehicles by 2028, including 45,000 electric Oshkosh models and 21,000 commercial electric models by other manufacturers. The agency has deployed 2,010 Ford e-transit vans from 65 locations nationwide and 612 custom-built next-generation delivery vehicles from Oshkosh cost defense in 15 sites. Overall, more than 35,000 new vehicles, including 8,500 EVs, are on the road today. They've added 6,650 charging ports at 75 sites, but a total of over 14,000 have been purchased. The new fleet rollout is proceeding well, aligned with our plan, said Justin Glass, USPS Fleet Manager Senior Director. We understand everyone is eager to have the new vehicles in their offices and in their neighborhoods. But remember, this is a multi-year effort. What other applications do you think are primed for converting to an all-electric fleet? 
Lexus is bringing back its legendary LFA nameplate with a bold twist. Unveiling the LFA concept at a high-profile event near Fuji Speedway this week. The all-electric sports car concept pays homage to the original 2010 V10 powered icon while embracing a zero emissions future and shares core engineering with Toyota's new GR GT hybrid sports car and GR GT3 race car unveiled at the same event. The company says the LFA concept aims to preserve and evolve Lexus's handcraft car making heritage. It builds on the Lexus Sport concept shown earlier this year at Monterey Car Week, which we reported about at the time. Aside from talk of the lightweight all aluminum frame and vehicle dimensions, few details were revealed. Powertrain specifics remain under wraps, but the fully electric setup could potentially debut Toyota's solid-state battery technology at launch for faster charging and greater efficiency than today's EVs. The company indicated intent to produce the LFA without offering a timeline or pricing. A full unveiling is expected sometime in 2026. The previous version of the LFA sold a limited 500 units in its last run and was listed at nearly half a million dollars with private of its sales on the used market going for up to a million dollars. An electric supercar can easily surpass the combustion predecessor by almost every metric, even without utilizing emerging technologies. These have been our top EV news stories for this week. We hope you'll consider subscribing and sharing this video so that we can continue to produce the show each week. We also have two videos coming soon from the Pebble Flow Camping Review and our visit to the IANA Media Day that includes an interview with the CEO. Stay tuned because we plan to publish those this week. Thank you for watching and until next time, drive, fly, ride. Go electric.